Hey folks, Storm here with another figure for you. I'm going to show you how I painted Storm from the Marvel X-Men series. And we're going to focus mostly on exactly how we can take black and white and add contrast to it. Because if you've ever painted anything in black or white, it's very difficult to create contrast. Because black is already on the dark end of the spectrum and white's on the light end of the spectrum. So what we need to do is figure out how we can use color to create contrast on our blacks and whites. And today we're going to show you exactly how I did that. So let's dig into it, shall we? Alright folks, to start, we're going to do as we always do. We're going to make sure we sand and prep our model, make sure everything fits, and then we're going to prime it. Now this is obviously after I've sanded and cleaned up, you know, any imperfections or issues from the printing process such as the supports, things like that. So we're just starting with a nice coat of black primer. This is Vallejo's black primer. You can use anything you want in terms of brand. Vallejo works just fine. Uh, I know a lot of folks like Chaos Black from Citadel and I'm actually going to try some of that here soon but I don't have it. But anyway, you're just going to try using some kind of black primer to start. And then what I'm doing is painting this base white after I masked it off. And while I had white in the airbrush, I figured I'd go ahead and add some zenithal highlights to our model. Now, I know I mentioned we're going to be using color to pre-shade our model. And you guys have seen me in the past use color to pre-shade something like X23. So we're definitely going to be doing that again here. But in this case, I knew I was going to be painting yellow. And you don't want to paint yellow over black. It'll just look really bad. So we're going to paint it over white. And look how nice that looks. Nice, simple base for this model. I really do like it. Now, the colorful pre-shading that I mentioned, it, it, this is key to not only keeping your models saturated with color but also specifically in this case we're trying to make a leather look we're going to start with a light blue coat and then use dark blue to create shadows so essentially put the light blue over the white zenithal and the dark blue over the black you can keep the shadows black but again i wanted to saturate this model which is why i'm using blues leather that is black typically shines blue and if you've ever seen in the comics too a lot of times they use blue to make it shine black and the reason for that is because blue is the closest color to black so what you can see i'm doing here is i'm just slowly building up more and more highlights especially on her chest area just trying to add more blue highlights before i then paint it with this black ink this is just black ink from Vallejo that I have thinned down very slightly and I'm spraying it in very, very light coats over top of that blue highlight. And what that does is it gives us the illusion that it is black leather that is shining with a blue shine. This is a time consuming process because you have to be very careful to only put down thin coats and if you put too thick of coats on, you, you'll essentially ruin it. Now, after all this, you'll see that I'll, I'll put a gloss varnish on to really bring out the shine, but I do that last. Okay, so you'll see that much later in the video that uh, it's really shiny and glossy. It's because of a gloss varnish. Now, after I had those blacks down, I wanted to paint the skin tones, a little bit of skin tones that she had showing. Now, they are very small patches, so I just masked off with some masking putty and tape, just small areas that I could then blend in some nice golden tones brownish tones because we do have Halle Berry who played Storm as far as we're aware right so uh, very nice golden brown skin tones which is different than a lot of our other characters that we typically paint and I know some folks were interested in the darker complexion of skin tones so you can see I started with a light skin tone base like a zenithal highlight from the top but then I filled in the brownish skin tones from the bottom to create the shadows and also to create just her, her base skin tone and again I highlighted in areas with uh, just a base flesh so moving on to some of the details again I painted her shoes here with a little bit of white and then used transparent yellow to go over top of it I use the same black ink but in a brush this time to go over the belt and what that does is it gives it an actual solid black look and you can see how we have a black belt and the you know blackish bluish leather so you actually can create contrast because you're not just painting black imagine if we had painted everything just solid black and tried to paint a black belt it would have been awful so what you can see I'm doing is I went over the leather jacket with a little bit more ink that way it's a little bit darker just to kind of create some contrast between her shirt and and her leather pants and her leather jacket and then I 
painted ink again over top of her zipper, painted white and then yellow just like her shoes on her little logo on her chest. And you can see what that looks like. The jacket stands apart from her shirt, which is kind of the whole point, trying to create a little contrast. You can see I painted her hands the same way. Her hands are kind of folded behind her back, and I did her nails up a little bit lighter. And then for her hair, I just used some putty to cover up her face, and I dry brushed her head and then painted over with like a grayish color. Because again, it's like a white color. And if you remember from the movie, she always kind of had like silver hair. So I wanted to go for that look with the white highlights and then a gray look. And again, it gives you the ability to create the contrast with the whites by not just painting it white. Don't just paint flat white, use grays. We have a few details on her face, like her lips, which I used reddish flesh for, and then her gold earrings. And then we have her eyelashes here and around the edge of her eyes, like eyeliner. So I did her eyeliner and her eyelashes in black. And you can see the brush I'm using is a, I think it's a 1.5 brush that I really know this is actually a, a zero brush from a Thailand actually really nice fine tip on these so you can get in there and make those details so again you can see I'm just applying the eyeliner and then I'm doing the whites of the eyes you can use white or you can use like a deck tan color it doesn't need to be uh, super white or like a cream white would work too but in this case I just used white and you'll see I actually added something I don't usually do I actually put some reddish flesh in the corner of her eyes there like where her tear ducts are I thought that was a nice little touch that I don't usually do and then for her eyes my camera died when I was doing the black part for the pupils but you can see I made the black shape where I wanted it painted in the gray of her eyes and then I'll touch it up with the pupils in the middle just to clean them up and again I'm using the reference photo here so I can get the angles right and I think that turned out really really nice and that's really it folks That's how simple and easy it is to use color to create contrast on a black and white character. In this case, we also got to show the effect of creating leather using some gloss varnish after that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Special shout out to my patrons who support my work and support this channel. If you're interested, go ahead and check out my Patreon. I'll leave links in the description. Also, if you're interested in any of these models, I also do offer them at my many stores that I'll leave in the links in the description. Thanks and make it a good day.